The Small Business Show, episode 382 for Wednesday, June 1st, 2022. <laughs> And welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, where we are small businessing every week. We're actually small businessing every day. We just do the show once a week. Our sponsors are sky-sale.com slash rate tracker, where you can go to learn for free about what you are actually paying for your merchant account for your credit card processing fees. It's an amazing service. It's something I wish I had uh, five years ago, 10 years ago, but I'm glad I have it today. Yeah. yeah. And a new sponsor for us, but certainly not something new is Zapier at Zapier, Z A P I E R dot com slash S B S where you can automate thousands of oh different gosh. business things. Are you a Zapier yeah. user, Shannon? Yeah. Um, it's, it's one of those things like uh, text expander where you, after you set it up a few times, you're like, how did I live without this? Yeah. I forget what it does for me because it does things that I don't have to think about anymore. So we'll talk yeah. more in depth about each of those in a moment for now here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. <laughs> Ready to go. Ready to roll. Uh, June. We're already at June, man. I'm excited. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 yeah, I am too. Life's been a little nuts. The markets are all over the place. It's a terrible time to be trying to get offers in for a business that we're trying to sell. But, you know, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I feel like we missed our window, but, um, well, everything happens for a reason. That's what I keep telling myself. Yeah. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yeah. It's all good. We'll figure it out. Yeah. And sometimes plan B, it turns out to be better, Yeah, you know, B for better. So you just, you you never know. And, and uh, I'm sure it'll, all come together it's gonna be fine it's just you know it's like dang it we were we were close and then like i mean i that's not to say that things aren't aren't coming together i I don't know but it like i i can see what the markets look like so it's like oh (laughs) yeah Yeah. interesting mentally the business is strong and yeah uh, but there's a big mental aspect of it there's a lot of companies out there that businesses are in good shape and look good but still their value has dropped by 60 70 percent correct um but so there may be just a little adjustment uh, time before people start thinking, okay, these companies are strong. I can, I can keep my money in them. And- I can, I can put my money there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's going to be the, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. It's, um, it's been, it's been interesting. So we'll, we'll put it that way. Yeah. It's been fascinating. I, 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 I can't wait to be able to talk about the specifics of what we've gone through and what we've learned and, and some of that through this process. Obviously there's, there's lots that's still confidential and all of that, that I, you know, yeah, it's I just not the right too, time, right? but yeah, there's so many things I want to share. So yeah, it's good. We did awesome. episode 380 uh, two weeks ago where we were talking about mailing lists and we got a great piece of feedback from Scott at feedback at Uh Scott says that last episode reminded me of an email I regularly receive from an online retailer that is impressive for its customizations. After buying a 2022 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon, one of the most customizable vehicles on the market, I searched for parts to customize my new toy. One of the online retailers I stumbled upon was Extreme Terrain XT. XT is part of another company which sells customization parts for pickups and SUVs, but I'm, of course, interested in their Jeep parts. To search for parts, it asks for details about your specific Jeep so they know that they can show you only the parts that will fit. The details they ask for include the color so that when they show parts, the images include Jeeps which match your color. One of their services, yeah, no, it gets even better, right? One of their services, he says, is to offer a wish list. If you're interested in the product, press the save button to save it to your wish list. After creating your account, XT regularly sends newsletters or ads. Their newsletter includes a header icon with the basic information about the Jeep I entered into the system. The email they send is customized to note that I own a four-door JL Wrangler with an option to see any image in Firecracker Red 
the color of my Jeep. Yeah. yeah. He said, aside from news and other information, the email will include items on my wish list. If there's a sale, the email will highlight the sale price. If XT has a spend X and receive Y coupon for a future purchase, the email will show me enough items to receive the coupon. The email will link to customer images of builds that use the products in your wish list. A few weeks ago, he says, I had an email conversation with another Jeep owner who forwarded his email from XT. Since he owns a white Wrangler, the images in his email showed white Jeeps. When I purchase something off my wish list, the product is removed and I no longer see it in future emails. However, it will advertise related products. So, he says, trying to figure out what they were using, I perused the message's source and found a reference to richrelevance.com. I don't know anything about Rich Relevance other than what I see on their website. It might be something to investigate. Yeah. So I looked at Rich Relevance here and okay. they, I mean, th 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 this is their, like the, the, the XT has leveraged what Rich Relevance does. Now, obviously Rich Relevance has to be deeply integrated with you know, extreme terrains, uh, shopping cart and all of yep. that so that they can do these customizations, but they have the smarts and the engine to be able to send out customized emails to people, which is amazing. Like that's a big deal. I, I, that is a big deal. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. It's pretty cool stuff. Um, very cool. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. It just, I mean, it just makes you know, it's, it's just connecting with you on an entirely different level, right? That's it. It's been, yeah. Yeah. That's huge. Yep. Yeah. So it's richrelevance.com, just like you think, but we also put the link in the show notes at, uh, at business So thank you, Scott. That's, I love this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and now they they've, so they got acquired and they're called algonomy. Now, as Al Algonomy? Al oh, Algonomy? Al they're owned or, yeah, yeah, Al Al Algonomy. Sure. Oh, and they have a Shopify connector. Imagine oh. that. <laughs> oh, wait, of course Brilliant. they do. What a smart yeah. thing, right? That way the integration is easier Built for right you. into your store. It's built yeah, right into, built your, into your, your store. store. Uh, yeah, man, you know, Shopify, right? Like that's... Uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's great. Smart that's great. stuff, man. Yeah, huh. they're being used. It, it's a, it's a yeah. Go to the site, check it out. You'll see who's using them. Uh, yeah, to, to do this stuff, and you'll go. Oh yeah, <laughs> I shop there. Yeah, uh, so, great. Really smart. I I'd love to know. They don't have pricing on their website that I can see easily. I would love to know what this would cost. My my guess is it's obviously a tiered thing, depending on how many customers you have and all that. But yeah. um, I I I would love to know what the minimum buy-in is right y you know like what's it take to get rolling here so yeah yeah well it, it is interesting yeah it shows on their website they have 200 customers which okay. would lead me to believe it might be a little more pricey Super expensive but, yeah <laughs> but I, I i i don't know that that uh, i don't know it's it's a good uh, well somebody from there they ought to reach out and let us know so yeah yeah well I, I, as as always i will let them know we've talked about it here on the show and and i'll ask them yes. some questions so yeah, yeah. very interesting yeah, that's cool Cool. I love this stuff. This is great. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for the uh, the question, Scott. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. What are we doing today here, Shannon? What's on deck for the rest well, of this episode? Yeah. We're going to talk about, uh, we're going to keep on this employee track. Last week we did all about, a, you know, uh, creative ways to attract talent and, and uh, bring people that want to come work for you. And I, I had a conversation with uh, a friend of mine about, What's the best way to deal with employees that make mistakes or there's problems that you feel like, wow, you know, I need to actually kind of discipline or put in some controls. Uh, you know, do I use the carrot? Do I use a stick mm. uh, to, to everything? So I thought it would be worthwhile to talk about how to manage that. I mean, let's everybody screws up, right? So how do we minimize mistakes and at the same time build confidence in employees so they can continue to grow in in the business? So I'd love to take a uh, a dive into that topic. I I I would love to as well. The next thing that I would love to do if it works for you, Mr. Shannon Jean, is tell everybody a little bit more about each of our two sponsors. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Hey, look, we all know how it is. If you're trying to grow a business, your time is precious. Imagine if you could streamline all of those routine operations that eat up your time and use all those different services 
like lead management, employee onboarding, customer support, or just automating some postings here and there. That's what's awesome about our sponsor, Zapier. Zapier makes it easy to connect all your apps, automate your routine tasks, and streamline your processes, freeing up your time to prioritize customer and client needs. It's the power of automation made possible for everyone. Look, I know I'm a nerd, right? But I don't like to have to be a nerd just to get my business to run. And this is why I've loved having Zapier. I've been using Zapier for years. I use it to automate a bunch of my social postings. I use it to take data from my shopping cart at one of my businesses and populate a spreadsheet, a Google sheet, so that I can have all the data right there the way that I want, easy to find. I can look it up like while I'm doing a podcast, if I need to like thank a customer or something like that. It works amazingly well. And it's just one of those things I forget about all the stuff that I use Zapier for because it just works. You can automate almost any workflow imaginable. See for yourself why teams at Airtable, Dropbox, HubSpot, Zendesk, Small Business Show, and thousands of other companies use Zapier every day to automate their businesses, our businesses. Try Zapier for free at zapier.com slash SBS. That's Z-A-P-I-E-R dot com slash SBS. And our thanks to Zapier for sponsoring this episode. You know, payment processing is confusing. And the worst is when your payment processor takes advantage of that confusion and uses it to screw you. You don't want to be screwed, especially if you don't even know you're being screwed. Imagine, what if there was a free solution, free solution, right? I'm pie in the sky here. I get to imagine. What if there's a free solution which allowed you to easily and automatically understand your bottom line credit card processing rates and fees every month? Well, imagine no more. Rate Tracker is a free and simple way for you as a small business owner to know your costs to accept payments so you don't get lied to or taken advantage of by your payment processor. Too many times, payment processors have intentionally left us in the dark. We're their merchants. We're their customers. Why do they do this to us? So they can get more money out of us. It, it's just how it works. There's a lot of them that are just bad news out there. Well, as a responsible business owner, Rate Tracker is your tool to level the playing field. Take back your hard earned money. And then Rate Tracker makes it simple for you to understand your costs and to accept payments and provides you with free access to trusted payments experts like SkySale Solutions, which can give you free advice on how to optimize your payment acceptance program. So visit sky-sale.com slash rate tracker to sign up for the only service that's dedicated to helping you know your numbers, keep track of your payment processing costs, and alert you immediately if there's ever a rate increase. Go check it out, sky-sale.com slash rate tracker, and our thanks to Rate Tracker presented by SkySale Solutions for sponsoring this episode. All right. Super, Can, yeah, super useful. So, yeah, I know. I, I love it when we, I, I love, we, we actually have a great crop of sponsors these yeah, we days. Do. Yeah. It, like they're all services that we either currently use, have used, or would use if we were in the business where we, where they made sense for us. Like it's, it's yeah, yeah it's, absolutely. it's great. Uh, yeah. 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 I, it actually feels really good. I hadn't, I hadn't stopped to think about that in a little while, but, uh, those folks over at Backbeat Media are doing a good job bringing in the uh, the uh, right sponsors for us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. All right, man. So, so we're going to talk about employees and uh, mistakes and discipline and rewarding. And all carrots that, and sticks. Yeah. 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 You know, and, and the, I, I always struggle, you know, with this because uh, I'm this positive, very optimistic person. And But you have to be able to deal with the negative, right? How do you uh, either adjust negative behavior to, to turn things around or, you know, shift people out that, that are kind of negatively impacting your, uh, your small business, especially if you have a small team, one person can be super toxic, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's hard. I, I always take the blame for someone that, that is a bad fit. And I know that in the, it, that's true. At, at the yeah. end, it is a hundred percent true. However, yeah. sometimes the, 
responsibility that falls to me is not fixing them, but getting rid of them. And I, Correct. I hate that second part. Even if it's someone who absolutely deserves to be let go, I hate doing it. I, I, yeah, it's I'm just not, not my thing. <laughs> I don't think anybody is, but uh, it, it's it's important to to figure it out and and to try to come up with a system that you can address these issues uh, to keep them from you know exploding out um, uh, out of control. Yeah, you know, so. no, it's true because it, it can yep. it can sink the wrong employee or the wrong culture can sink your company, and one person can be that toxic you know influence that does it. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, for sure. So uh, the the what what I was trying to do is, is, you know, create employees that are really conscientious and that it's not like they're not going to learn from they're not going to make mistakes, but you want them to learn from those mistakes and try to shift the frame to make it positive because, you know, everyone around is watching what's going on. And when you don't address mistakes, it it has a real detrimental impact on the rest of the people, right? Because they're like, man, this guy's, you know, really messing up this or doesn't follow directions is not doing all these steps that we're, we are all required of. So uh, you got to address it. Yeah. It's it's, it's real important. Yeah. So I, I'm like, what, what is one of your, one or more of your favorite methods for, for addressing mistakes? I, I, I made an error with something, at, at backbeat here Sadie asked me a question I told her uh, yeah do it this way and and then I realized after it was finished oh I, I like I told her the wrong thing like wrong, well yeah. I I thought I thought what I was telling her was one thing what she was hearing was another and it wasn't her fault that it like it was truly my fault and so you know in our staff meeting it, and this actually happened in front of in front of the whole team I just said oh hey by the way I effed up. I, you know, that, that thing that we were, that you asked me about where I said, yes, I should have said, no, here's, here's what I meant to say, but did not articulate. But I I think there's like, to me, it's, it's that, you know, it's the same thing as showing up at a party and being a little bit self-deprecating, right? You know, it, it does, it, it shows people that, okay, look, if you're going to call out things that we do, you also call out things that you do. Like you're not yeah. perfect either, but somebody's got to hold everybody accountable and it's you. So you yeah, hold yourself right. accountable as well. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's a huge, uh, I mean, it's, it's so important and it also helps you to build trust mm. with your employees when you recognize when you screwed up and you talk about it openly, like, Oh, you know what uh, this, and, and it's, you know, it's that philosophy is when you want to criticize, look in the mirror. When you want to give praise, look out the window. Yeah. And I really believe in that. Um, and employees that when there's a sense of trust in your organization, th- I, I think you just your people make less mistakes. And and it they also and maybe more importantly, when they do make a mistake, they feel they feel more comfortable speaking up about it. Yes. Right. When something goes wrong, because you want to know, because especially if it's some kind of systemic problem that is happening that you that you have to address. Um, so the, I think trust comes first in all this stuff is creating that environment where um, you, you know, and, and a great way to implement that is, is really, you know, call yourself out when you yeah. when you make the mistake. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's just how it is. Like uh, and and yeah, I, I, I guess that's the tr- that's the trick. Right. Is trust is yeah. Make it because you want everybody's going to make a mistake. We always say on the show, mistakes are our tuition. Like I, there are yeah. many mistakes I've made that in the moment hurt deeply. I mean, yes. like terribly deeply. I get it, but looking back, it's like, well, I acknowledged that mistake. Eventually, I eventually moved past it, and now look what I've done based on what I learned from that awful thing. And that like, that's huge. So we want, we want our employees to be able to have the same opportunity to learn. And one of the best opportunities to learn is to have something up and then fix it or, or, or at least don't do it that way again. (laughs) Yeah. And and it's not fixable. Yeah. Once you get that trust, you know, it, it can be a kind of precarious thing, right? Because everyone is, if, if a problem happens, excuse me, if a problem happens, it's public that everybody sees what's going on they're all going to look around to see how it's handled and either a manager supervisor or you as the owner, how you're going to handle it. It's really important. And, you know, I like one of the things is, I know it sounds really obvious, obvious, but just a reminder, 
don't discipline people or correct people in public. It, it, you can correct them if it's done the right way, but you know, that trust is a, it, it, it can be precarious. So you want to pull somebody aside and go, Hey, I noticed this, you know, maybe we let's try it this way. Uh, and, and how you, how you put it together. And, th- and that, that same trust is your managers and supervisors. They need to have it as well. So you, you're going to have to have some standards. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause it's not all about how you do it. Um, and developing those standards, I think is, is one of the hardest things to do for me because it, so many unique different things happened right uh, during the day and problems come up, but how you hand and, and maybe the standard needs to be, this is how we handle problems, right? Not every specific problem, but this is what you do. Yeah. Um, Cause everybody's personality is different and, and your managers, your supervisors, whatever, they need a playbook to, to look at. So they don't have to figure things out differently every single time. Cause you're going to get some, not so positive results if you if you leave that up in the air, right? Yeah. Well, yes. It, yeah. You it needs to you need to address it all for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And and to, back to your point of like what you do to get started, I think it's important to have you know you need to have an employee manual. I hated doing those, but you can get you know just search online. There's a ton of online services that can help you through it now, and a lot of them just do it by kind of interviewing interviewing you and also basing the manual on your uh, unique state and what your laws are and that kind of thing. That's very important. Um, so how you discipline and what happens should be a part of this employee manual, right? Um, because then you can give that to your manager, manager, supervisors. Hey, read through this because this is what we're going to do, right? Yeah. Uh, and this is what we're allowed to do. You may not be able to go up to somebody and just go, you're fired. <laughs> you know, uh, hopefully you didn't jump right well, to that. You, but, you probably yeah. can, but it, that is considered letting them go, not firing them. Yeah. And you yeah. will be on the hook for uh, for unemployment. Yeah, sure. Right. Like, I mean, because in most states here in the U.S., it is, you know, a um, uh, employment at will, I believe, is the term that's used. Yeah, right? that's right. So yep. if either party does not wish to continue this arrangement, it can be terminated. The difference is if you, the employer, terminates this and there is not just cause Then when the employee goes to file for unemployment, they will almost certainly get it. And then your unemployment rates go up. And that's just how it works. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, And, and, you know, that manual, though, that everybody should get and everybody should sign that they've read through it. You you know, I like to keep them as brief as possible. But if there are things that are important to your organization, like a dress code or what's your mobile device uh, policy, right? Are they going to, can they be on their phones? What's your, you know, don't leave it to them making assumptions or uh, having another employee say, oh, they don't allow us to do this or whatever. Put put it in your book and and you don't have to be super lawyer. Uh, is that a word? Lawyerly, <laughs> you know, yeah. super rigid about how you do it. And, you know, uh, I always love to have little, you know, had adding humor to things really helps kind of release some of the pressure of it. And you can even do that in your manual. Just be like, Hey, you know, don't be on your phone all day, you know, or something. Just, just, yeah. you know, how, however you want to do it, don't leave it up in the air to speculation. Um, and this it, it, again, and your supervisors, managers can use it, but it all comes down to one other very, very important point is whatever system you come up with, all of your employees need to, to need to be treated the same way. Very important because it's just like with not, your kids, you got to ma- you got to yes, maintain consistency. Yes, yeah, you got it. Yeah. And if just like your kids, if you're not uh, doing that, your other people are going to notice it. Some people will take advantage of it. Some people will be very upset. You'll lose that trust. Um, and, y- you know, one of the things I have, you know, that I always remind myself, you can't let like a rock star employee that's super productive or whatever get away with things just because they're doing good in one other area. You have to be able to pull them aside and go, hey, we love how much you're getting done. But, you know, when you're talking to other people, it's not cool to say this or don't do this or you're you're 10 minutes late because I've had discussions where you're like, look, you're late in the morning and then they're responsible. Yeah, but I get way more done than everybody else. Right. Yeah, well, that, that's not a that's that's not the answer. The answer, you know, you're late in the morning. If if 
what is it? Do you need, do you want to shift your work hours? I mean, I can talk flexibility and I can pitch that and explain that to other people because we're flexible with them too. Sure. But if, but if you say you're going to be there at eight 30, you have to be there at eight 30. I don't care how much you're getting done during the day. So yeah. everyone has to be treated the same. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that that absolutely makes sense. I, I so how do you how do you deal with the person that I mean the 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 first instance of it we just sort of talked about, right? You have the conversation, you push them, you know, you try to put, show them where the guardrails are and and get them back on track. H- how do you deal with the you know the what is the discipline path here yeah. when when you have to discipline someone? Well, right. How do you do this? Like I hate that part of it. I do too. And I, so hopefully before you're at the point where you're going to make that discipline, you've done these exercises that we're talking about now. Okay. You know, is it a lack of training? Do they not know what they're supposed to do? Uh, Is it just their attitude that we need to focus on? Or, you know, do they not know our policies? You need to ask yourself that because that's going to come up when you go to discipline and you don't want to put your foot in your mouth and you're getting ready to discipline somebody and they're going to go, well, I had no idea. You know, I don't, I don't, you know, try to, so you got to do a little investigation. I didn't know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, You got to talk to that person and say, Hey, give me, give me this scenario. You don't have to respond immediately unless, you know, it's something where it's putting people in danger or whatever. Of course. You can, you can do a little investigating and go, Hey, tell me what happened here. And you go, great. Thank you for your feedback. I'm, I want to talk to a couple of other employees or whatever, if, if it's something like that. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and, or if you see something like in our case, where I was in the technical field and somebody was just doing something where things were breaking, then I would, you know, do I need to talk to the employee or should I go talk to their supervisor and say, Hey, th- is this person qualified to do that? They seem to be having, you know, problems. So do your investigation. Uh, you know, I always try to do a verbal conversation the first time. Okay. I, I just, I'm hoping that that works, right? Yeah. Hey, and, and I love the compliment sandwich. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think it's very, um, it can be powerful. And the first is talking about, hey, you know, one of the reasons we hired you because you're, you know, you had a good attitude or whatever. Figure out what it is you like about that person or what they do good. And then in the middle, you want to hammer them for what they did wrong. Go, look, we love that. But what's going on here? You know, when you're late from lunch every day or you're you're talking disrespectful to your supervisor in the warehouse and that's just not acceptable. What's going on with that? Yep. And then when you have, then you talk about a little bit more, you go back and hit the compliment again and go, okay, great. You know, look, you've got a great uh, opportunity here. We want to move you along the career path and someday you could run the whole warehouse or this, or, and you know, you've got, you want to have that conversation and squeeze the, that discipline in the middle. If you can, uh, uh, if you do it verbally, what you just described, you've talked about the compliment sandwich. We've talked about it before on this show. What you just described is perhaps the best example of that I've ever heard because it, it you really sort of spelled out the three parts of it. And and you did not downplay the middle of it, which for this conversation was the most well was the yeah, critical part. Yeah, 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 it has to be. You have to know it's serious. I, it's, it, yeah. it, at this point, you've called them. It's not just a comment you could make, like, "Oh, oh, hey, do it this way." You've you've brought them aside privately. You're having this discussion. Uh, tell them why they're great. Why they, why you hired them in the first place, or what good things. Hammer them, and then you know, give them talk about how good the future can be with them. Yeah. No, I, I, I yeah, it, and just to not bury the lead here, you you mentioned disciplining privately. Unless there was something that happened, you know, that was a safety concern where you have to address it in the moment, and there happened to be other people around. Waiting until you can do it privately is the key to making yeah. this work, because then you can actually have a conversation. You might even be able to get to someone to admit they made a mistake, especially if your culture is such that mistakes are okay. Right. Uh, but having someone deal with that in public almost, Oh, it's terrible. It, well, you, you're going to just put them on the defensive even more than they might already be. And that's going to be terrible. Yeah. And they're embarrassed. And, right. And it's you're, embarrassed. You, yeah, exactly. They're already probably embarrassed because most of the time they know they made a mistake, uh, yeah. the way they handled themselves, whatever their behavior or whatever they were doing. And so they're already a little embarrassed. And if you call them out publicly, it makes it even worse. And it, you've, you've lost your opportunity to change the frame of the whole situation to help limit their frustration and to 
walk away with a positive outlook of how things can be in the future. When you, if, if you call them out publicly and, you know, God forbid, ridicule them or whatever, or yell at them, that's just ridiculous. Uh, you've lost a great potential and you could lose just a great future employee that way too. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to make this situation worse. And even if you know that, okay, this is the third time or whatever, I'm going to let this person go. You might hear that voice in your head say, you know, if I do this in front of the other employees, they'll know that I'm serious about it. Well, they'll know that you well, were serious yeah. when that person doesn't show up at work anymore. Yes. Yes. Like you That's don't, right. you don't need them to see how you got there. They just need to see the result and that's it. Uh, so yeah, I yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah. So the verbal thing first, Yeah. if it, if it doesn't work, you know, then uh, you, you, you have to write it up because you, you need to document everything, right? You're, you're going down this road here, uh, protecting yourself, protecting your other employees. And, you know, you're going to write it up and go, Hey, you know, this is what happened. Uh, this is, We've talked about this before. I'm going to write this up just as a reminder to you and to me. I'm going to put it in your employee file. So if it comes up again, we, we'll have this to refer back to. Yeah. Um, and I, like the, kind of I like the have this to refer back to. I've used that when creating contracts with people, uh, but it's great for these kinds of things. That, that, that Using that as the reason for documenting something is great. And I, I it, it's, a, it's a good... To use the word trick is wrong because it's not a trick. It it, it actually is for that reason, but it helps right. it helps diffuse the situation, right? If you say, "Look, we're doing we're putting this in writing, so we all have it to refer back to," it it explains why at least one reason why you're doing it, as opposed to we're putting this in writing for some nebulous reason that can sound sort of ominous. You just, you yeah, know. that's right. your permanent record. <laughs> right. Yeah. When you say it that yeah, way, no, it starts, that. yeah, it starts to become, you know, really nerve wracking when you just say, look, I'm just going to put it here so that we both know we had this conversation. We both agree in this moment, this is an accurate reflection of this conversation for a contract. It's an accurate reflection of the things we've all agreed to. I know we all know them, but it's helpful for me to remember by writing it down and just, yeah. you know, using it that way. Yeah. And if you if you remember, this is just another form of customer service, but mm. you're dealing with an employee instead of a customer. The the two tokens uh, concept you can look up on at businessshow.co, it still applies. You know, you want to manage a, a, this person and you you want to get on the same side of the table for them, unless you just want to, you know, dump them and not have if it's right. really bad. But yeah. if you think there's a future there. And they're valuable to the company and you, you know, people have a relationship with this person. You want to get on the side of the table with them. So when you're writing that stuff up, you'd be like, look, man, I'm, I'm sorry that we're at this point. Or, I'm sorry. Don't, don't apologize. No. Back that up. Yeah. Uh, don't ever apologize. Uh, just go, you know, uh, uh, you're at this point. We're going to put it in the, you know, keep a record of it here so we can be reminded of it. Like, like you're saying. And then, you know, some people do the second write up. I'm not sure. Uh, I put that in my notes because you certainly could do second write up, do something like probation. Uh, you know, by that time, I kind of feel that, hey, uh, if this is the same thing, especially if it's a interpersonal issues, I think mm. those are, th you know, technical issues like I don't I'm not doing my job correctly. I think you can give them a little more time. I agree with that. Yeah. 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 Interpersonality issues where other people are in, impacted and they're watching how management responds and they think this person's a jerk or whatever, or they're late all the time and nobody else is late. Why don't they call that person out? Those are, um, those are trickier and those are, I believe more severe and require a faster, uh, Per, you know, you, you can't, gotta get yeah, on you, block quicker. You, you gotta get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I've always thought of this. This is gonna be terrible. And anybody that works for me that hears this is is probably gonna. Well, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but the way I look at it is, what am I thinking in my head? If if what I'm hearing myself say is, "What are you, an idiot?" That's some technical problem, right? You know, yeah. it, and technical is is a broad term here, but some you know functional issue where you don't understand how to do your job or how I would want you to do your job. <laughs> That's maybe a better yeah, way right. to say it, right? So if I'm saying in my head, "What are you, an idiot?" That's a problem that we can take a little bit of time to solve. If in my head I'm saying, "What are you, a jerk?" That's a yeah, problem that needs to be solved quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
very different. Two very and, different and, things. That's right. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and the, the latter can be far more damaging to your organization. So um, acting quickly is, is important. Yeah. So, so it, it, it just ask yourself the question, are, yeah. are they an idiot or a jerk? And then you know how and, to respond. And, yeah, I like that. That's, that's a good litmus test. Li- it is litmus a good litmus test. It's a terrible yeah. thing. Like, well, you know, yeah. the, neither of these I'm are totally positive mad. terms, but yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. The, the, the thing, when you do a verbal discussion with the, you still need to go document that. You got to document everything. So, of course. Because you, and, and I forget, right? I'm always, I'm this, like a squirrel guy and I, I got a million things going on. I have a pretty wide bandwidth, but I'm not really great with details and dates. So, you, you need to put it in the, the your notes and drop it in their employee file. They're like, oh, on the, you know, on May 24th, I talked to Joe about his attitude here, da, 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 explained this and told him he had a good future here. And he told me he was going to, okay, I'm going to, you know, commit to not doing that anymore and adjusting. Drop that in the file because the next time when you want to do that write up, you can remind yourself like, hey, we've already talked about this because, you know, they could say, well, you didn't, we didn't discuss this issue. You want to be confident and go, yes, actually we talked specifically about this. Yes, so that's document right. everything. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's not a fun thing to deal with, but it is really important and you want to protect your employees uh, are really, they're your best asset. The most important thing to your organization is the people that you work with every day and you have to protect them. And, Dealing with these disciplinary issues, especially if they're interpersonal, is critically important and falls on no one's shoulders but yourself. It so. is. Yeah. 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 Just because it's they, they are the ones acting the wrong way, it you it it ends with you because if your business ends, it ends with you. And that's just it how it is. You got it. Yeah. 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 But yeah. But we'd love to hear, you know, what works for you. Share uh, feedback at businessshow.co or come to the uh, small business support group. There's been a ton of activity there lately. It's terrific at businessshow.co slash Facebook. You can get in there and we can all uh, share some tips. We'll be and hash it out together. Yeah, it's yeah, that's been great. I, I love the discussions that we've been having and because I, I get to learn things, which is which is what I love. It. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. As Shannon said, feedback at businessshow.co. We would love to hear from you like we heard from Scott at the beginning of the episode. Uh, Thanks for that, Scott. It was awesome. And uh, check out our sponsors. Remember, we've got zapier.com slash SBS and sky-sale.com slash rate tracker. All good stuff. Keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next week.